Hi guys and welcome to a deck tech video for Rashmi. With me today I have the master Ben who's been crafting this Simic Elf Druid Eternity Beast. Welcome here and I'm uh, grateful you want to come and share your experience with us. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. I've played Rashmi quite a bit so I'm looking forward to sharing my expertise. So why did you uh, pick up this commander? Like. Uh... So I originally picked up Rashmi because I've played a lot of control in a lot of different formats and I really enjoy that kind of archetype. So my entry to CDH was Rashmi because A, it's playing control and B, it is good at, uh, it's, it's a good budget deck. So for those two reasons, I built Rashmi as my first commander. So this is an interesting commander. Whenever you cast your first spell each turn, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card with convert a mana cost less than that spell, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. If you don't cast the revealed card, put it into your hand. Is there anything here on how you're building your deck because of this specific ability? So I think the most important part here is that we're drawing an extra card each turn. And it's not just your turn, so you want to be casting one spell on as many people's turns as you can to draw the max amount of cards per turn cycle. And it doesn't matter so much that you get to cast it for free some of the time, it's just an added bonus and you don't always even do it when given the option. But uh, the last part's also really important that you're putting it into hand instead of drawing it, so it's dodging Hull Breacher or mm. Notion Thief. Yeah, that's true. The Hull Breacher has become a really common card you run into. Not even Stax decks plays it, because Turbo uh, Breach decks play this as well. I don't know if there are many blue decks that don't play it. Y yeah, well said. How do you think Rashmi plays in the current meta? I mean, the current meta is kind of fast Turbo Adnos and fast Dockside, fast Breach, wheels and such. How is she performing so far for you? So I think she's a little worse in the current meta. You're going to want at least one slower deck in the pod. Once mm -hmm. you have one slower deck that can help you keep down the faster decks, then you can start to take control of that game. As long as you get to untap for your third, fourth turn, you start to take control very quickly, but you need to get there. You also play a smaller version of uh, Rashmi, the Wavebreaker Hippocamp. Uh, what's your thought on this? Is this like your, uh, just a secondary commander card here? or It's, it's really just a second copy of Rashmi. Uh, it's a little worse in a couple different ways, uh, but it's also cheaper, and if you can have both out, that's even better. So, having a redundancy is good. And how do you win the game? It's more of how do you not lose the game. <laughs> just, uh, it's mostly just controlling the game, eventually you find yourself a win. Your win con is uh, Nexus of Fate and just attacking people. Uh, you can even make yourself a bird with Swan Song. Nexus of Hayden is incredibly durable win con. Someone could even mill it with Ashiok and they still don't exile Nexus of Fate because it shuffles back in as a replacement effect. So I'm not too worried about how I win. It's more of how do I establish control. I like that answer. I actually like those kind of uh, decks where you're trying to puzzle something together during the game. But you can also win with the uh, Seasons Past. How do you do that? So with enough mana, Seasons Past can go infinite by grabbing tutors and cantrips and being able to loop Seasons Past, but it can also just be a incredible value engine of just Seasons Past, grab three, uh, grab Force of Will, Force of Negation, a, a cantrip, and people are going to be very hard pressed to win through a Seasons Past re resolution. But if you want to win with the big uh, Seasons Past, what do you need here to get there? To go infinite with, um, with Seasons Past, you're really going to be looking for Merchant Scroll for Mystical Tutor or Mystical Tutor itself, or you can also use Intuition to grab uh, Mystical Tutor, Reap, and Noxious Survival. What do you think of this intuition pile? You grab Reap, Noxious Survival, and Seasons Past? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, because whatever they give you, you're gonna get your Seasons Past. It's gonna be expensive, though. Yeah, the I mean, the whole deck is really slow. Like, you can... I feel like if you're going infinite with Seasons Past, often you're gonna be having... Uh, you have Dramatic Scepter in play. Ah, yeah. So you actually play Dramatic Reversal and Scepter in this deck without having a way to win with infinite mana from your commander. So it's a little deceptive because mm -hmm. you don't have an infinite mana outlet on your commander. You have a couple X spells to win on the spot with Rashmi, but the Ice Crown Scepter does one really subtle thing, which is it casts a card every turn. 
and that's dramatic mm. reversal. So yeah. what you can do is it draws a four card or four cards every turn cycle. Generally, when you have this in play, you're not going to lose. Yeah, and I remember you saying the plan A is not losing here, kind of. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You, you only really change gears to winning when you're either about to die to combat damage or you think that you're 0% to lose. You know, dying to combat damage, uh, your deck doesn't play that many creatures. I think your deck has some like... Wait, you're an Arbor Elf, Baral, Bird of Paradise, Ghostly Pilfer, Gilded Drake, Hull Breach, and uh, Wave Breaker, Hippocamp. It's very real to die to combat damage in this deck. Generally, you're not going to be the first one attacked, nor the black players, but it's... Yeah. Eventually, yeah. people are going to get tired of you sitting there controlling everything. And you're kind of setting it, up, setting it up, too. I mean, you're, you are controlling the game, making the game longer, making those creature-oriented smash decks have time to smash face, so to say. Yeah. I have a card ID for this deck regarding the current meta and regarding dying to combat damage. What do you think of Scavenging Ooze uh, now? That's one I could consider. It's a good card. I generally prefer Grafdigger's Cage or something yeah. like that. Scooz is not bad. The majority of your cards in your deck are basically just control counter spells. You've smashed in almost everything you can find here. Oh yeah. From miscast to mother of the mixture to spot removal nature's claim. Counter spell even. Even counter spell and rapid hibernization and reality shift. So you're giving creatures to your opponent as well. Luckily they usually don't attack me until later. You can always psych rift to like overloading psych rift is very real in this deck. But how much mana do you really need? I mean, Nexus of Fate, Seasons Pass, those spells are quite expensive. Where is like the the sweet spot of where you want to be to be able to afford these? I mean, Nexus of Fate requires a lot of card draw and tutors as well to function. I mean, you're trying to win late enough that the mana isn't as much of a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, like, beforehand we were on Enter the Infinite, which casts, costs 12 mana, and the main plan was to hard cast it without Dramatic Reversal in play. So, uh, with Counterspell Backup, which means it's, it costs more than 12 mana. Mm. So, this deck, since you're not trying to win early, you're not too worried about how much mana these spells cost. There are some sneaky ways you can loop Nexus of Fate that uh, I haven't mentioned. For example, uh, Isochron Scepter, imprint Mystical Tutor, Mystical Tutor at upkeep for Nexus of Fate, cast Nexus of Fate, <laughs> and repeat that until all of your opponents are dead to Rashmi damage. That is 9 mana to win, I believe, right? Yep. That shouldn't be too hard. So when you're starting the game in your pod, how should you pilot this deck? So I think that this is true for any CDH deck, but everyone should mulligan really, really aggressively. And that's just by the nature of a multiplayer format with high variance uh, mm -hmm. power level in cards. And so I want to mulligan extremely aggressively for a two, turn one, turn two, Rashmi or some other card advantage engine. Um, Ideally Rashmi, because it's the best one. But by doing that, then you can interact on turn two and stop the turn two Adnaz and make it to your turn three. So I'm guessing you're looking for cards like Yule, Lotus, and Mana Crypt here to just speed up the Rashmi. Exactly. Mana yeah. Vault too. Oh yeah, you get a turn one Rashmi with a Yule Lotus. That is actually quite nice. Oh yeah. Rashmi, people underestimate how much card advantage she makes. Mm, she I makes can imagine. so many cards. How should you play against this deck if you're going up against it? I'd say aggressively hit the Rashmi, but you want to be mm -hmm. careful because if you hit the Rashmi and the Rashmi player is desperate enough, they'll counter back and then you might lose to the third player who casts Adnaz uh, when Rashmi player was the desperate enough to protect the Rashmi. So you mm -hmm. have to ride a very careful line to not let other people win, but also don't let Rashmi have too much control. Yeah, because you're not a threat in the beginning. You're going to be a problem late. Exactly. Why do you play Baral Sheaf of Compliance? Is it just because you're playing so many counter spells so you want to increase your draw capabilities here? So in a way it generates mana because it reduces the cost on a lot of different spells, but also it provides uh, some card selection when you counter something, which you're going to be doing a lot of. You get to loot away lands and find more gas. Thought Scour. That seems Ooh. like a small card. Target play puts top two cards of his or her library into his or grave a draw card. That card has been better than you would think because someone yeah. just vamps and then you thought scour them and now 
like, that happens a lot, and you want a high density of just random cantrips to cast that are instant speed, because mm -hmm. those cantrips are cards that you can cast on other people's turns when you had no other spell to... Like, you didn't want to use a counterspell because you thought that counterspell was too valuable, so you mm -hmm. use that mana for a cantrip instead, and you're netting plus one card because of Rashmi. I see, and I guess that's why you're playing all these uh, opts and exactly. brainstorm variants, basically. I mean, the deck is pretty straightforward. It's filled with... Yeah counter spells it's filled with ramp it is a very simple finisher in the end that's basically the deck right yeah it's extremely straightforward in terms of there's no complicated spell secret lines there's no this there's no that it's just you control them and then you win one thing i'm a little bit scared about uh, fearful for this deck is that i think counter spells have become are really tricky to actually use to control that game unless you're playing rashmi uh, because you're you're trading if you don't have rashmi in play you're basically trading one for one and you're gonna yeah. it's gonna That's be so hard i definitely yeah. want to talk about counter spells are intrinsically bad in a multiplayer format because if yes. player a counters player b's spell player c and d are up a card because they didn't spend a card in that exchange mm. so you really need to have rashmi out before you start spending counter spells freely otherwise you're gonna end up down cards and just be in such a bad spot so we're really relying on rashmi here to make as many card uh, we're triggering rashmi as many times as possible to draw as many cards as possible i so 100 percent agree with this i think rashmi or a similar mega card drawing uh, commander are the only ones that can actually go the control counter spell game so what is this deck's strengths so Rashmi's strength is primarily the late game. If you get to the late game, you are extremely favored and will probably win. You have tons of interaction to be able to stop anyone from winning. And lastly, your win cons are nearly impossible to prevent. Also, you're resilient to hate. Uh, no stacks piece really interacts with anything that you're doing. How about this deck's uh, weakness? What are things you should think about when you're putting this deck together? Primary weaknesses for this deck is it's extremely slow. I think I've only gotten like one turn two, turn three win ever. I just naturally had dramatic reversal and scepter. And a blue sunscene, but... I'm guessing, after that. Yeah, something like that. The deck's very hard to play. You need to be evaluating all of these things constantly, like I mentioned, and make sure nobody is in a position where they can win. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you learned something new about Simic. However, if people want to ask you questions or talk about Rashmi, is there a way to contact you, or is there a Discord group where you could brew Simic Rashmi with others? Uh, you can definitely hit me up on my Twitter, uh, BenLobe3, and there's also a Discord where uh, we discuss Rashmi and all Rashmi things. Yeah, there's the link in the descri description box below. Also, click the video over here. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, people. See you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you want to support me, feel free to share my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Players website using the affiliate link in the description below of the video will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.